And so people knew something was afoot. And there were astonishing moments of media bias. Like here's, uh, I think this was Sky News, um, talking about how it was the far right that was rioting. But take a look. There's a migrant on a motorbike that pulls up behind her and threatens her. It's not a far right wing white football hooligan. It's a migrant. Take a look. Community leaders have been speaking to the police as well because... Free Palestine! Free Palestine! But I think, apologies for the language you're hearing, but a sense of the right. anger, I think you can Casey. hear there. Yeah, Casey, I think we... Becky, I apologise. We uh, need to um, leave you there. Here's another TV clip talking about the far-right white protesters or rioters. He's a migrant man carrying a machete. And, and look very pleased about it whilst they do it, did it. Then there was this, as I say, clash between protesters and the police, and that is when they then ran off across the park here. Um, a big group ran off, um, looking for trouble, it looked like, to us. So we're just going to step away now from this group behind us, but um, a lot of disorder here, a lot of... Here's another report where the mainstream media is talking about white gangs, but the people in the background are Muslim gangs. Do not mind anyone. No, no, no. He's gonna, he's gonna do us. He's gonna do the same to us. My point is when you had two rival sides in what's looking like a civil war, when you have violence with something called the Muslim Defense League, I had not heard of that before, and the media is talking about the old English Defense League that Tommy Robinson started, I don't know, 20 years ago and disbanded, disbanded about 10 years ago. You've got two sides, and neither sh side should engage in violence. Both sides are, and, and I'm not saying that Tommy, as you saw, Tommy is against violence, but there are some white indigenous Brits who are so fed up with things that they are engaging in violence. Absolutely they are. And you have many on the Muslim side as well. A perfect laboratory experiment, you could say, to see how the media discusses both sides. Well, as more days pass and as the UK uh, turned into flames, Keir Starmer made a speech, very somber, and he made a very clear reference to Tommy Robinson, talking about um, instigators who then leave the jurisdiction, Tommy Robinson had his massive rally on July 27th and then went on holiday. So he, he couldn't be talking about anyone else. Here, listen to Keir Starmer talk about Tommy Robinson, mention the EDL, and condemn only the indigenous Brits and offer help only for the Muslim newcomers. Take a look. I utterly condemn the far-right thuggery we've seen this weekend. Be in no doubt, those that have participated in this violence will face the full force of the law. The police will be making arrests, individuals will be held on remand, charges will follow, and convictions will follow. I guarantee you will regret taking part in this disorder, whether directly or those whipping up this action online and then running away themselves. This is not protest. It is organized violent thuggery and it has no place on our streets or online. Right now, there are attacks happening on a hotel in Rotherham marauding gangs intent on law-breaking, or worse, windows smashed, fire set ablaze, residents and staff in absolute fear. There is no justification, none, for taking this action. People in this country have a right to be safe, and yet we've seen Muslim communities targeted attacks on mosques, other minority communities singled out, Nazi salutes in the street, attacks on the police, wanton violence alongside racist rhetoric. So no, I won't shy away from calling it what it is, far-right thuggery. By the way, I don't know if you saw this, I don't think I told you about it, but about a month ago, <laughs> 
Keir Starmer, again, he's, he used to be the top prosecutor in the UK. He's no dummy. Um, he announced that he is going to start emptying the prisons, even of very serious criminals. So it was just a few weeks ago that he started talking about letting criminals out of prison. Well, that's like an odd thing to do. If there's a crime wave in the UK, just like there is here in Canada. But now it's starting to make sense because Keir Starmer is living up to his threat. He is starting to arrest people. They are starting to fill the, they've emptied the, they're emptying the jails of criminals and they're filling them with political criminals. Take a look at these cops smashing their way into a home in Northumbria and pulling out a middle-aged woman. Well, things continued on. I mean, that whole country is roiling because really for a generation, you haven't been allowed to talk about this. And although both parties have talked about reigning in illegal immigration, both of them increased it, not just illegal, but legal. So Keir Starmer gave another speech and this one had an online emphasis, the emphasis on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And the reason why is, like I say, all the establishment media, all the establishment parties, all the police were giving the official narrative, but it was only through social media, especially Twitter X, that people could see what was really going on. I had a COBRA meeting this morning, which was an opportunity that I took to thank the police for their work over the last few days to express my support for the police officers who have been injured and the communities impacted by this mindless thuggery. There are a number of actions that came out of the meeting. The first is we will have a standing army of specialist officers, public uh, uh, duty officers, uh, so that we'll have enough officers to deal with this where we need them. The second is we'll ramp up criminal justice. There have already been hundreds of arrests some have appeared in court this morning. I've asked for early consideration of the earliest naming and identification of those involved in the process who will feel the full force of the law. And thirdly, I've been absolutely clear that the criminal law applies online as well as offline, and I'm assured that that's the approach that is being taken. Whatever the apparent motivation, this is not protest. It is pure violence and we will not tolerate attacks on mosques or our Muslim communities. So uh, the full force of the law will be visited on all those who are identified as having taken part in these activities. So Keir Starmer gave a second speech with his online emphasis, and it really reminded me of this great moment uh, by Constantine Kissin. Uh, take a look at this where he compares the United Kingdom and Vladimir Putin. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. Really? What sort of things get you well, arrested? Well, one example I give in my show is uh, there was a young woman from Liverpool uh, called Chelsea Russell. Her friend was killed in a car crash, a 19-year-old woman. And she posted the lyrics of his favorite song on her Instagram, the lyrics. And it was a rap song, so the lyrics contained several instances of the N-word. Okay? She was arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, given 500 hours of community service and a fine, tagged, and for a year she was under 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew. My goodness. In Britain. In Britain. In 2018. Isn't that incredible? 3,300 people arrested in one year. That's 10 people every single day arrested for saying something mean on, on Facebook. Um, and if you want to know how that looks, here's how it looked this weekend. Take a look. Okay. So, um... What do you mean I can't have any alcohol? Okay. Well, I'll 
I'll tell you. Okay, the time's uh, 20 to 3, 1440, arresting you on suspicion of improper use of the electronic uh, communications network. I'm just what? 127 of communications act, okay? So you do not have to say that it may harm your defence if you don't mention one question, something which relates to our own court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand that? So I'm actually being arrested. You're going to be arrested, okay? Right. So and you to the police station. Right. You, okay, this is in relation to some comments that you've made on a Facebook page. Okay? Oh, really? Oh, it's a Facebook crime, is it? Okay. Right. So we need to ask you some questions about that. Right. Have you got anything in your pockets? Um, I've got my keys. I've got... No, I spade it, I think. Keys. So, anyone who's been arrested, we can search them under Section 32 of the Police and Weather Act. Right. And that's for dangerous items. Hey, can you, can, I mean, you, you said I was going to be un arrested under some what inf information? Or, so if, but I'm going to be arrested for posting on Facebook. Made some comments that are offensive, obscene, and people have made a complaint about that, and it's uh, and can you can you tell me what this comment was? We'll okay, that. well we'll do that when we interview. All right, and okay. so what am I going to be locked up for the night, or hopefully well, not? Hopefully not. Right, do Unless I need to take my medications with me? How yes, we will look at taking all of those. When do you need to take them? Well, I've got pain medications. I've got sleeping medication. I've got anxiety medications, which I might take one of those in a bit. Okay, you know. Well. If we take everything with us, then you've got everything there, haven't you? And then, and then, the nurse, okay. then that, we've got a nurse up there. They'll be able to. Um, okay. They'll be able to look at, come and see you, and then once you've been there, they can assess whether or not the medication can be issued. But people aren't stupid. Maybe they would be in the dark were it not for the brutal honesty that we all get through Twitter. But they could see it. They could also see this by a citizen journalist. The, the head of the Metropolitan Police, that's the police for London, had been meeting with the Prime Minister at 10 Downing Street. And he came out. And a citizen journalist asked him a simple, polite question about two-tier policing. Citizen journalist, this could be the UK's David Menzies without the hat. And look at what that police chief does. Are we going to end two-tier policing, sir? He hits the microphone like an emotionally out-of-control child. W what is he doing? Now, I mean, technically that's a crime. That would be assault or I don't know what the British term would be, assault on property or mischief or something. I, I don't think anyone is going to sue him over that. But... But just an astonishing detestation for anyone who dares to bring out uh, examples of, of the two-tier justice system here. Um, there, there's many of these memes circulating about people who said hurt words and were sentenced to actual prison, whereas rapists who have actually raped women have been let out without any time in custody. Again, they hate Twitter X, because that's where many of these things are shared. There's a focus on Twitter in the last few days. Many MPs are taking a shot at Elon Musk directly. And he's poking back, asking questions about two-tier policing, asking questions about Rotherham. He should be careful. <laughs> Listen, Elon Musk doesn't need advice from me, but I can see that he is making himself public enemy number one. You're seeing all sorts of MPs uh, take aim at him as they've done before. Remember this clip from Yvette Cooper about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago in Parliament, grilling the head of counterterrorism for Google and YouTube about why they let Tommy Robinson even show up in their search results. Let me show you a short version. You'll see Yvette Cooper and another Labour MP named... Um, Naz, I forget her last name, and then there's an, a Tory in there, and they're basically all agreed that the government should regulate what you see. Here, take a look at how they went after Tommy almost 10 years ago. 